Welcome everybody to I'll Buy the Popcorn. My name is Stephanie. Thank you all for clicking on this video. Now if you're someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? Now for the next few months, I'm going to be tackling the Disney eras, not all the Disney eras. Today we are going to be ranking the five films that make up the golden era. reminder this is my own personal list this is how I rank these Disney films now the golden era runs from 1937 with Walt Disney's first featured length animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and it goes all the way to 1942 ending with Bambi now with that said let's go ahead and get on with number five and that's going to be Pinocchio I did just rewatch this movie again I rewatched I think like three of them before I did this uh, ranking just to kind of give me a little refresher it's just it's really not my favorite it's never really been my favorite so it is kind of weird for me I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie that I do have it this far down because it is a very like dark creepy scary type of movie and that's kind of like my vibe in a way but then He's a freaking puppet, so I think that's why it goes all the way down. Because yeah, I know I don't like scary shit. At times, I'm just like, it looks like it might have been a day. It might have been a week. I don't know, you guys, how long this was. I'm going to say a week. And he had a tough time as a real wooden boy for his first week. I mean, it was it was something. The villains in the story never really got captured. Nothing really became of the villains. You know, they just kind of went on doing what they were doing, you know, making people in well, making kids into donkeys. I mean, it's pretty like fucked up if you really think about it. <laughs> Unlike the other four films in this category, I don't really feel like the animation held up. I mean, there's times that I feel like it did, but then like when we got to the well, I'm just like, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. I know like the no situation, like him telling a lie is like a big major thing for him. Like, oh, like Pinocchio's nose. You're... But honestly, there was only one scene where his nose grew. I, I thought it was more. I keep confusing. Well, not confusing, but I, well, I get confusing. Uh, comparing it and confusing it. The Adventures of Pinocchio. Any 90s babies here? Who recalls that movie? I honestly saw that movie way more than the actual Pinocchio movie. There's parts in the movie and the actual animated movie that i'm like oh where was this is this and that because i'm like i know that happened but i'm like oh wait you know what that happened in the adventures of pinocchio moving on number four and that's going to be dumbo okay before i go any further with dumbo here i, I need to know because this was another one that i rewatched. it's really really short i think it might be the the shortest one and it was actually a really low budget film i mean there are parts that i'm just like yeah i could see the low quality i could see the low budget portion of it but um, the story is just much sweeter and it's sadder, of course. And okay, okay, give me. I said, am I ADD? Yeah, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're new, I wonder a lot of times. Okay. Dumbo's mom, does it, don't they take her away? I could have sworn. Like, not, not like in isolation. Like, she was like in circus prison. But I'm just like, I could have sworn they took you away. Or was that just in Tim Burton's Dumbo, the one that came out like three years ago? Because when it happened, there I wasn't surprised like I'm like oh they're taking the mom away like I was expecting it so I could have sworn that the whole time they took her, his mom away but not like just locked up away like in jail but like they send her off and like she never got sent away she stayed there and when I see saw her at the end like waving at Dumbo while he's flying I'm just like like wait a minute Miss Jumbo what are you doing there because like I thought they sent you away but you're still here like see that can tell me that be low does a mama ever have a Mandela effect? This one is one that at the beginning of the movie, it just had that disclaimer um, that, you know, the, the things that are happening here that they don't agree with anymore. Basically because of the crows, because they're black and they hired, I guess, like, you know, they hired black actors to voice them. Up until they mentioned that, did anybody else realize that? Because I honestly never did. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, the thing that, <laughs> I mean, I get it, I really do, but I mean, just people just, picking that shit and complaining about every single thing. I never as a kid was all like, oh my God, there goes the black crows with black voices. Never, ever, not even as an adult did it cross my mind. It was until they literally pointed it out to me and I'm just like, oh, okay. But anybody else, like did y'all notice that growing up when you were little or as an adult or until 
also when somebody put it out. All right, number three, you guys, and that's gonna be Fantasia. This is when uh, Walt took a little bit more of a, of a chance. It was more of a, an experimental type of film. This is also where we got introduced to the uh, Sorcerer Mickey. So of course, you know, he's very iconic now. We do have different like sequences within the film. Uh, of course, one of my favorites is with the Sorcerer Mickey and he's like mopping and all that. And then it goes crazy, you know, with, um, not Melvin. <laughs> oh Lord. Morbin? No. The wizard? It's gonna come to me. Probably when I'm editing, it's just gonna pop up here. I'm really hoping it'll pop up right here. Melvin. It starts with an M, right? Sword in the stone. Arthur. King Arthur. King Arthur's sword. The wizard. Magical. Magic. Magic in the... I don't know. You guys really move past that. But this one is definitely a work of art. It's great to look at. Moving on to number two would be what started it all, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And of course, it is a very iconic, we got our very first Disney princess, lovely Snow White. We have a great villain. We got some great side characters with the Seven Dwarves. Let's see, can I name them all? Let's see here. We got Sleepy Dot. Oh, shit. <sighs> Dopey. Sleepy. Dot. Doc. Grumpy. Happy. Is there a sad one? I got five. Wait. Shit. Y'all let me know down below. Can y'all name all the seven re ring here? Can y'all name all the seven dwarves? <laughs> Who am I missing? Eating? Eating? No. Hungry. Oh, dopey! Wait, did I say that one already? No, I didn't. Dopey. What if I got Chingo? Dopey, grumpy, sleepy, bashful! Bam! Yes! Your face. Moving on to number one, of course. At the, oh no. No, will it? Sorry. No, let's go back. You already know who my number one is, anyways. I had a couple more things to say about Snow White. I got too excited. It's a competitive in me. I'm very competitive like that. Okay, it have a really good soundtrack. It does have a few like pacing issues. The animation, even though it is simple, it is really nice and beautiful to look at. So now we are done with Snow White, let's move on to number one, which of course would be Bambi. And this is how we ended the golden era. I'm not alone on this one, you guys. Apparently Bambi was supposedly Walt Disney's favorite film and actually has been called the crowning achievement of the Walt Disney Animated Studios. It is one of my most rewatched childhood movies. I still have my VHS tape, you guys. Oh, I probably should have had it here. Just thought about that. You know what? With my other rankings, I'll make sure to have it right here. Now, Bambi does have great visuals. It has a great story. It is a very dark story. So here goes my darkness, you guys. I know I talked about the darkness in Pinocchio, but that one was just more creepier with that. Here it is more dark and sad because Bambi's mama dies. Coming back to the Lion King. The Lion King just happens to keep trying to pop up in this era. Everybody always talks about Mufasa's death being the saddest death, how they cried, how it affected them as a kid. That death did not affect me at all. As a kid, as an adult, never. Now Bambi's mama dying, yes, that, that tore me to pieces. I was like, oh my god, like she got shot, like you know that they took the damn body either to like hang a head, eat it. Guys, come on. Like the things that they do to Bambi's mama. How can you not feel for Bambi, Bambi's mama's death? But y'all caring over here more about Simba and I mean Mufasa. I mean again, nobody, you know, rankings and stuff. But I want to put my two cents on that. That everybody always talks about Mufasa's death. You know, we talked about really Bob, uh, Bambi mama's death. And I'm just like Bambi's uh, mama dying was way, way worse because she got, I mean, they both got murdered. But whatever where am i going let me let me let me look at my notes you guys i'm getting i'm getting too emotional about bambi trying to defend it <laughs> let's see here i think that's all i had to say about bambi to be honest with you <laughs> this is how i rank the five films that are in the golden era go ahead and let me know down below how do you guys rank these uh, films let's see if we at least have one in the same spot um of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new until next time i'll see you guys at concessions